Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is AP Essentials video 37. It's on the average value of the electric field. And so we've used topographic maps and topographic profiles as an analogy to understand how electric charge works in an electric field. And so one of the places I've always wanted to go to is Ayers Rock in Australia. This is a picture of it from the side and this is what it put, looks like from above. And this is going to show the contour lines on the side. In other words, lines of equal elevation. And so there's a wonderful uh, website you can go to. It's geocontext.org. And what you can do is take any map in the whole planet and you can drag from A to B. So this is where I've chosen from point A to point B and then it'll build a topographic profile on the side. And so what you can do is you can actually move point B and it's going to show you a different topographic profile. You can then zoom in and we can go to different areas on the side and we can see how much it's changing. In this case it was 32 degrees. If we look at this hole going up this side it's going to be 22 degrees. It's showing how much it's changing in the vertical in relation to the horizontal. This looks really really steep, 57 degrees, quite a change right there. If we were to look on the top of Ayers Rock, we could see that it looks more flat along the top. Even though the profile gets exaggerated, it's only 2.5 degrees is the average change uh, or the average change right there. And so again, if we're using this analogy and now applying it to electric potential, if we have an electric field like this between two parallel plates, we see equal potential lines that are equally spaced out. And so you can think of this almost like an inclined plane. It doesn't matter where you step in, it's going to be the same electric field strength on either side. And again, to figure that out, we take the voltage across these two parallel plates, divide it by the displacement by the two, and that's going to be our electric field strength. And it's going to be consistent here. But what if we don't have a consistent electric field? What if we have these equal potential lines that are spaced out? Well, then we can just use the average field strength. And so we'd find the, the uh, potential at two different areas, in this case 12.6 and 2.8. And then we're going to divide the difference between those two by the displacement between the two. Now it's not exact, but it's going to give us an average electric field strength or electric potential. And so again, if you have parallel plates like this, we've got the voltage and displacement. Voltage, remember, is a measure of how much work is done to move a test charge from one place to another. So for figuring out the electric field strength, all we do is divide the voltage by the displacement. And so if the voltage is 1.5 and the distance between the two is 5.0 centimeters, we just use this equation. What's going to be our change in voltage? It's going to be 1.5. What's our displacement? You can see right here that I've changed this from 5.0 centimeters to 0.05 meters and now I simply multiply it and that's going to be my electric field strength or electric potential between the two. But what if we're given a problem like this? This is really common in AP physics. How do I figure out the difference uh, or the average distance in those potentials, let's say between point A and point B? Well, all you do is find what the potential is at those two different areas, just like finding the elevation at two different areas on a topographic map. Right here it's 15 volts. Right here you can trace it right here. It's down to zero volts. And so we're going to have a, a change in potential of 15. Where's my distance? Where's my displacement? Well, you can see here on the y-axis that it's showing my displacement in meters. And so I set up my equation again as the change in the voltage or change in the potential over the change in displacement. So I'm getting 15 volts as a difference between the two. And then how did I get 2.2 meters? Well this looks like around 6 and this looks like around maybe 3.8. I'm not perfect obviously. But that's going to be the distance between those two. And so then I would just say it's 6.8 volts per meter. Now a real common other question might be let's say we point, put point A here and we put point C right here on that line over here, what would be the difference or the average uh, value in the electric field or the difference? It's going to be zero. If you ever move along an ISO line, again, it's going to be equal levels of potential. And so did you learn to calculate the average value? Here's our equation, again, it's on the formula sheet. And then you did you learn to use ISO lines? So you just trace the ISO line that's going to give you its potential at different areas on the map. I hope that makes sense and I hope that was helpful.